Hi, this video is recorded for Embedded Systems course given in Erges University. In this part, I will talk about the stepper motors. What are they? Which types? The Darlington Array IC. What about the driving? And I will give a demo. First of all, the explanation. An alternative and often better solution to servos. To achieve direction control is the stepper motor. These motors are commonly used in measurement and control applications. Sample applications include inkjet printers, 3D printers, and CNC machines. Stepper motors are brushless DC motors with solid magnets. Solid magnets are located in on rotor shaft. Electromagnetic coils are located on stator. Rotate action is controlled with pulses applied on inputs. The motor's position can be determined with steps without a position sensor for feedback. The motor is carefully sized to the application in respect to torque and speed. Here you see stator and rotor. Stator is the static part, rotor is the rotating part. There are three types of stepping motors. Permanent magnet, uh, the other one variable reluctance, and hybrid stepper. Permanent magnet and motors have a magnetized rotor. Variable reluctance, this type of motors have two soft iron rotors. Hybrid steppers, they combine aspects of both permanent magnet and variable reluctance technology. The stator or stationary part of the stepping motor holds multiple windings. The arrangement of these windings is the primary factor that distinguishes different types of stepping motors from an electrical point of view. There are three types. Permanent magnet and hybrid motors may be wound using either unipolar winding, bipolar winding, bipolar winding. What about the phases? Phase, the circular arrangement of electromagnets is divided into two groups, each group called a phase. A phase. And there is an equal number of electromagnets per group. The number of groups is chosen by the designer of the stepper motor. The electromagnets of each group are interleaved with the electromagnets of other groups to form a uniform pattern of arrangement. Electromagnets within the same group are all energized together. Here, look at the first picture. You see phase A, phase B, phase A, phase B. The uh, alternative for reverse A is A, reverse B. So, this is two phase uh, motor. What about the other one? Here you see ABC, ABC. So, ABC interleaved. And the uh, opposite side, you can see the A reverse. From the B perspective, you can see B reverse and the B, and C reverse and the C. So here we can see the three phase, uh, three phase uh, motor, and uh, we see six different windings are located. What about the other? Here we can see the four phase stator uh, application, and A B C D. They are called as A B C D. At the uh, opposite side, we can see. A reverse, B reverse, C reverse, D reverse. So uh, you read, you can read. Electromagnets within the same group are all energized together. So A and A reverse will be energized together. What about the other? The last one is the five phase uh, motor. You can see phase A, phase B, phase C, phase D, phase E. So stepper motors phases are related with the stator and the windings. Rotation in the stepper motors. Super wave pulses applied into poles of coils precisely to achieve increment in the shaft rotor position. Each pulse moves the shaft through a fixed angle. Each of the rotations is called a step. Multiple electromagnets are arranged around a center gear-shaped 
piece of iron. The electromagnets are energized by an external driver circuit or a microcontroller. To make the motor shaft turn, first one electromagnet is given power, which magnetically attracts the gear teeth. When the gear teeth are aligned to the first electromagnet, they are slightly offset from the next electromagnet. This means that when the next electromagnet is turned on and the first is turned off, the gear rotates slightly to align with the next one. This step is repeated with an integer number of steps making a full rotation. Uh, in this slide, in this section, I want to talk about the unipolar stepper motors with two phases. Unipolar stepping motors are composed of two phases, windings, each with a center tap. Unipolar stepping motors, like all permanent magnet and hybrid motors, operate differently from variable reactance motors. Here in this figure, you can see the um, center tap. The rotor is permanent magnet with six poles, three north and three south. So current direction is a unipolar uh, motors is dependent on which half of a winding is energized. Direction of the current through the stator windings determines which rotor poles will be attracted to which stator poles. The halves of the windings are bound parallel to one another. Therefore, a winding acts as either a north or south pole depending on which half is powered. The center taps are either brought outside the motor as two separate wires or connected to each other internally and brought outside the motor as one wire. As a result, unipolar motors have five or six wires. Here in this figure, we can see 1A, 2A, A, 1B, 2B, B. So we have uh, six wires. The center tap wires is tied to a power supply and the ends of the coils are alternately grounded. In this uh, figure, you can also see the uh, permanent magnet with, uh, you see, uh, six different poles, three north and three south. And uh, the steps. If the step angle is 90 degrees for a unipolar step motor, in full driving mode, only one half is energized by connecting the ground at the same time. Motor is rotated 90 degrees for each step in the full driving mode. The pulses have to be sent within the given order in the left table. Here you see in the left table that the full drive steps are given for unipolar stepping motors. You can see uh, 2B, 1B, 2A, 1A, A and B. A and B, both of them are uh, energized by the uh, power. But when we connect the 1A, 2A, 1B, 2B, only one of them to the ground, we energized only one half of the winding, so it rotates the motor 90 degrees. If we use half drying mode, energizing one half and two halves is done respectively. First of all, only one half is energized, after that, two half is energized. So the motor is rotated 4 to 5 degrees for each step in the half driving mode. The pulses have to be sent with the given order in the right table. Here you see in the right table, first of all we give only 1A. We connect 1A to the ground. After that, in the second step, we connect 1A and 2A in the same time. After that, we uh, close 1A. We cut the 1A. Only 2A is connected to the ground. After that, two of them, 1B and 2A, is connected to ground. After only 1B is connected. After 2B and 1B is connected, only 2B is connected in the uh, next step. And in the last step, you can see 2B and 1A is connected together. Uh, we have a Darlington circuit, integrated circuit. This IC device enclosed in uh, seven Darlingtons. What's Darlington? A multi-transistor configuration called Darlington configuration or Darlington pair is a compound structure of a particular design made by two bipolar 
transistors connected in such a way that the current amplified by the first transistor is amplified further by the second one. So here you can see the circuit. We have two transistors connected. When we give the uh, signal from the in line, we can get the uh, out and we will uh, get a better uh, with high current on the out. Here, uh, this is the IC uh, figure. Uh, you can see seven different inputs and seven different outputs. We need to connect ground. We need to also connect common free filling diodes. Uh, the other common part, common. Uh, several motors consume high current and hence we will need to use a driver IC like ULN203 in order to control the motor with a microcontroller. Microcontrollers cannot give uh, needed current to the motor so we need to use an extra IC. Needed current cannot be taken from the microcontroller directly. This IC device includes seven Darlington's. Darlington and multi transistor configuration called Darlington pair. So I explained. Uh, basically, the second transistor amplifies the output current of the first transistor. Each of the Darlington pairs is capable of driving loads up to 500 milliampers and 50 volts. VLN 203 IC is needed to drive stepper motor with a microcontroller. In the unipolar stepper motors with three, two phases, here uh, we can do a demo in simulation software. We can connect VLN uh, 203 to the um, stepper motor, unipolar stepper motors, and we can also use uh, digital logic states. Uh, there are six different inputs for a stepper motor and we uh, connect A and B to the power. 1A, 2A, 1B, 2B is connected to the Darlington array IC and uh, when we give uh, to the inputs of the Darlington array, uh, when you see uh, in 2B, in 1B, in 1A, in 2A, there are four different uh, logic states. When you only give in 2B, you will connect 2B to a ground and uh, the angle will be 45. First of all, after 135 uh, plus 90 degrees, plus 90 degrees, plus 90 degrees. So a full uh, rotation for a motor can be done in four steps. When we look at the uh, two phases unipolar stepper motors and if we use a, a half drive half drive steps uh, here if the steps uh, are 30 degrees you can see uh, sorry this is the full steps if you use 30 degrees and if you give uh, full steps only one of the poles are energized is connected to the ground so energized so uh, totally the full rotation can be done with 12 uh, different steps i will do the uh, application in the simulation software so i started first of all i give only one after that i give two one after that one give two one you can see when we uh, uh, get the next step we can uh, turn the stepper motor with half angle if it is 30 then it means 15 degrees for a half step if you uh, use 90 degree steps the ability is 90 degrees so half steps will be 45 half of the uh, full step so in this example i give only 
uh, one of them is connected to ground so this is full step so you see the uh, rotating angles what about the bipolar stepper motors bipolar stepper motors uh, these are composed of two phases windings and have four wires bipolar motors have no center taps current flow in the winding of a bipolar uh, motor is bidirectional advantage to not having center taps is that current runs through an entire winding at a time instead of just half of the winding bipolar motors produce more torque than unipolar motors of the same size current will flow from left to right in winding one when 1A is positive and 1B is negative. Current will flow in the positive direction when the polarity on each end is swept. A control circuit known as H-bridge is used to change the polarity on the ends of the one windings. On the ends of one winding. Every bipolar motor has two windings, therefore two H-bridge control circuits are needed for each motor. The drawback of bipolar motors compared to unipolar motors is that more complex control circuitry is required by bipolar motors. In this figure, uh, it is illustrated that a 30 degree first step bipolar motors is illustrated. Motor winding 1 is distributed between the top and bottom stator poles. Motor windings 2 is distributed between the left and right stator poles. So we have, uh, you see in the figure, uh, in the stator part, two, two numbers labeled as 2 and 2 labeled as 1. The rotor is a permanent magnet with 6 poles, 3 south and 3 north arranged around its circumference. Like a unipolar motor, bipolar motors can be single stepped with two different control sequences using plus and minus to indicate the polarity of the power applied to each motor terminal and zero to indicate no power is applied. These sequences are shown for one revelation or 12 steps. The first sequence minimizes power consumption by energizing only one winding at a time. The first sequence minimizes power consumption by energizing on the one winding at a time. The second sequence maximizes torque by energizing both windings at a time. Here you see in the uh, figures, terminal 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B is connected to um, positive or negative parts of the power. And if it is zero, it is not connected. In the left, only one winding is uh, connected, energized, but in the right, uh, both of them are connected and erased. So if you want more torque, you can use the second one. If you need uh, power consumption, you can use the first part. Combining these two sequences into one sequence will half step the motor so that it moves in 15 degree because the full step is 30 degrees. The sequence for half stepping the motor has 24 steps multiplied by 2 because 12 steps for full step so 24 steps for half step. I want to give an uh, examination. I want to give a sample. Let's do. Previously, we used ULN uh, 203, and I will control this circuit with microcontroller. So I put the microcontroller. We put two buttons. These two buttons will. These two buttons will uh, give the control for the stepper motor to connect to right or left in the right order or the reverse order
I use to uh, pull down connection. Let's give a label for the terminals. I give turn right, turn left. I will connect these terminals to the uh, microcontroller input. So this is a pull down connection. I uh, put two terminals for terminals and I will connect them to A0, A1. We need to give the same label for this to we need to connect the IC and the microcontroller so there are four inputs for IC we need to send signal from the microcontroller You connect four terminals to the ULN 203. What are the names? I2B, I2, I1B, I1A, I2A. So we need to write the code for this. We need to send uh, full step or half step pulses to the circuit. Then they, uh, these pulses will connect some parts, some windings of the stepper motors and uh, it will rotate the rotor part for a, uh, for a fixed angle. The angle is related to the structure of the motor. Uh, what is the step? What is the step angle for that motor? So if we give full step, it will rotate with that angle. If we give half step, it will rotate with half of that angle. So I'll start a new project in CCSC. Just a minute here. Those later frequencies, 20 MHz, for this project. We need to define the buttons for rotating right, rotating left. Pin A0, pin A1, we use. We need to send the correct pulses in the correct order. So first of all, we need to determine the step size, half step or full step. In the half step, we need to give uh, only one energized or two energized with the order. But if in the full step, we have only four different pulses, one, two, four and eight. But in the half steps, we have eight pulses. One, three, two, after that six, after that eight, ten, 
8 and 9. This is the correct order for the steps because this one bit is related with the energized binding. We can define these steps in an array. Uh, so I will write two arrays for half steps and full steps. One, three, two, and six, and four, and ten. Sorry, twelve, not ten. Twelve, eight, and nine. What about the full step? The full steps are 1, 2, 4, and 8. We write two button statement with if. If it is pressed, then uh, I use an indicator where I will lock, lock, and uh, I send the output to the port B by using this index. I put a, a delay. This delay will wait between sending two pulses. I will wait only 20 milliseconds. I upload the hex code to the microcontroller in the simulation. Here you see I push the button, turn right or turn left, and it turns with the step angle. For each step, it turns for 15 degrees. Maybe let's do another ex example. Uh, in this example, I will use full step and uh, I will rotate uh, with full step, we connect two buttons. I give an label, start turning right, full step, start turning left, full step. Let us uh, to write two if statements for this. We need two variables. These variables are state variables, direction right and turning. If they are true or false, we can do alternative operations. If this button is pressed, then turning to row, the state of the turning is true. Direction right is also true. If button start left is pressed, the turning will also true. Direction right will be false. Maybe we can send the output B in the first part because we need to send first of all the zero condition. So lock variable first value initial value will be zero, and then we can send the first pulse to the output. After that, if it is uh, bigger than three in full steps, we only have four. 
steps pulses so we set it to the first index and the direction right and the direction left we write to different if the direction left we need to send the pulses in the reverse order so we need to decrease the value of the index If the other buttons are pressed, turning situation uh, state variable will be turned to false. The speed is uh, given for a delay. I change it to 200 millisecond. 20 millisecond is uh, very small, so I set 200 millisecond. Here you can see uh, the result on the simulation. First of all, uh, I will compile it. This is the running state and this is the direction state. Rotation direction is controlled with this direction right variable. If it is true, then the stepper motor will turn right. If it is false, the stepper motor will turn left. Here I use only full step pulses. Stepper motor used in this simulation has 30 degrees steps. Half step will be 15 degrees. If you want to rotate 300, uh, 360 degrees, you need to give 8 pulses. No, sorry. 24 pulses but also in the full step we need only 12 pulses In this uh, turning, we send full step pulses. We need to send the correct order. It's important. In the manual part, we step, we use half steps. Let's uh, push the button. Here you see when we push the right step, it uh, starts rotating permanently. It is rotating. Thanks for watching. You can see the other videos on the YouTube channel.